this is the uh, lecture number two, uh, online lecture number two. Uh, we are continuing with your initial uh, chapter uh, related to the introduction to financial markets. And we were talking about the different structurally, like, you know, different kinds of markets, like we discussed about the primary and secondary markets, over-the-counter markets, exchanges. And similarly, we discussed about the, like, you know, direct finance and indirect finance. And in the last class, in the end, basically, we were talking about the internationalization of financial markets. I told you that uh, the world is expanding. Uh, this technology is making the world very small and very like, you know, connected. And that's why the people are not only able to, uh, or they are able to basically operate anywhere in the world. And uh, especially with the uh, advent of the uh, organizations like Amazon, uh, the trade business actually has flourished and uh, there is no certain boundaries exist between the nations as far as these trades are concerned. And similarly, the financial markets are expanding quite significantly. The times have gone when the saving and investments had to be equal within the economy. Now, even if your saving is not equal to investment within your country, you can get other people's saving. You can bring more investments from outside of the world, outside of your country. Uh, you can bring more money outside of your region. Uh, you can bring more money into your country from other parts of the world. So it's a very easy now, basically, because it's very it has become very common that a country, uh, which is Pakistan, can issue a bond in some another country like UK, US, China, Japan, or any other country. Uh, similarly, the other countries can issue bonds in Pakistan. And you have an option to, uh, like, you know, launch bonds in different uh, denominations, in different currencies as well. Like you can issue bonds in dollars, you can issue bonds in rupees, you can issue bonds in yen, yuan, sterlings, or any other kind of a currency. Now, whatever currency is acceptable all over the world, you can issue your bonds in them. So uh, we were discussing about the euro bonds. Euro bonds, as I was telling you, has nothing to do, have nothing to do with uh, the currency euro. Uh, the bond is called a euro bond, which is issued by one country in another country in yet another country's currency. Like see, for example, Pakistan issues a bond in UK in US dollars. Now the issuing authority is Pakistan. Uh, the country where this bond is being issued is UK and the currency is being used of the US. So this is called Euro dollar bond. Like, you know, this is the bond, uh, which is the uh, Euro dollar bond in a sense, like, you know, that this is the bond which is being issued by Pakistani government in the territory of UK. And we are utilizing the currency of US. So uh, these kind of bonds are called Euro dollar bonds. They can also be the Euro Euro bonds, Euro sterling bonds, Euro Yuan bonds, Euro Yen bonds. So they can be any bond, like, you know, that the name of that bond will be depending on that, what kind of currency they are being issued in. If you are issuing these bonds in, uh, in the UK in dollars, that will be called Euro dollar. If you are actually issuing the bond in, in, the, in the UK in, in yen, that will be called Euro yen bonds and something similar. So the other thing is the foreign bonds. So you actually like, you know, why do people countries, why the countries issue these kind of bonds? What is your view about it? Why countries issue these kind of bonds? Of the, uh, so the objective of the euro bond and the foreign bonds are to get uh, the funding from other nations uh, because if your people are not able to save enough to meet the investment requirement, uh, you can always approach other people and other countries, uh, governments and markets for raising funds for your company or your country or your government. Uh, something similar is used for the euro currency market. And again, euro currency does not have to do anything with the euro currency itself. A uh, euro currency market is again uh, like you know that when you have a account in a, some bank, foreign currency deposited outside of the home country. Like say for example, euro dollars are US dollars deposited in London. Euro dollars. They are not euro dollar bonds. They are euro dollars only. Like you know, say for example, if you're opening an account in dollars, but the place where you are opening is a, this account is not the place of like you know the the, the original currency that will be called the euro 
currency market all right so you know like generally all these kind of transactions happen in dollar in us dollar specifically and and why uh, the these all transactions happen in dollar because the dollar is the most uh, like you know uh, traded currency in the world and the people want to have got their denomination and their assets in dollars so generally uh, these all bonds are issued in dollars like see for example they are the euro dollar bond euro dollar currency and something like that and similarly you know like the um, like you know there are other kind of the stock markets now as you know the the cities basically are getting uh, like you know multi centric pehle aapko pata hai ki pakistan mein jo karachi mein jo ek center tha wo sadar tha lekin that was a unicentric city at certain up to certain point of time in, in the history but now this country has become multi centric multi centric ka matlab kya hai ki karachi university ek center hai sadar dusra center hai a barrier town say for example might be the third center or some other centers basically or there's the other centers basically in the in, in similarly the stock markets basically used to be the us stock market used to be the largest but now uh, you have got very big asian stock markets and there are so many things basically happening all over the world so the the money is flowing everywhere the money is everywhere and specifically uh, you must have observed that the focus or the power is shifting from the west to the east west to the east like you know say for example right now uh, the the superpower is the us but very soon uh, china is perhaps going to take over the us might and us powers so that will be the center of the power will be in the east so before that the center of power was in the west so the things basically are changing now every the money is available everywhere the money is flowing everywhere and the stock markets are getting bigger and bigger okay so we have talked about uh, financial intermediaries already you know like the people like to invest indirectly uh, the reason for indirect investment or finance is that they don't want to expose themselves to the direct risks there are so many other reasons as well that we are going to talk like you know down the road uh, that we are going to talk about down the road and we are going to discuss that what might be the other reasons that people don't prefer direct finance and why they prefer indirect finance over over direct finance there are many reasons for that but you know like the uh, that basically the very 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 basic reason is that people don't want to expose themselves with the complete risks for themselves they want to share those risks with other people they want to basically use expertise of other people they don't want to hire uh experts for themselves to make like you know analysis for the investments that they are going to make and they want uh, the organization like say for example if you invest through bank if you invest through mutual fund if you invest through different kind of organizations these organizations hire a strong like you know people in strong in the sense like you know who know the market who understand the market so they actually like you know help you decide that where to invest and where not to invest so this is very very important and you know like when you make indirect investments or indirect finance you are able to save transaction costs do you understand the term transaction cost does anyone from you understand the transaction cost or can explain to us like you know about the transaction costs uh dekhiye transaction cost is the cost that you incur to complete any of the transaction and some of you have said like you know the commission that you pay to the agents of course that is a part of the transaction cost the transportation that you do or the use to travel to some place to complete your transaction that is called the transaction cost and of course that involve all the things basically that you do to complete your transaction like say for example if you want to buy something you have to search for the buyer or seller like say for example if you want to buy a car you have to find a person who is willing to sell the car and that requires time and that time has cost and similarly when you buy a car like you know that basically have got a lot of other cost as well like you know the transport registration cost and traveling cost time cost there are a lot of cost basically that you incur so when you make an investment there are so many kind of transaction costs that you have to incur like say for example if you want to make investment what you will have to look first you will have to look whether the person or the place you are making investments in is safe or not is na agar aap se main kahun ki aap ek kisi company mein invest kare to what would you like to do research on before making that decision agar aap aise koi batana chahe ki aap 
क्या कैसे डिसीजन लेंगे कि किसी कंपनी में इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए कि नहीं करना चाहिए सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल तो फर्स्ट जी मुकद्दर साहब बोले पहले जी सर व्हेन यू मेक अ प्लान टू इन्वेस्ट इन अ कंपनी बेसिकली यू हैव टू लुक एट देयर फाइनेंशियल कंडीशंस यू हैव टू लुक एट देयर ऑल uh revenues like say for example there are the basic two kinds of statements that you get hold on the income statements and and the balance sheets so in the balance sheets you find out that what actually kind of assets this company holds uh, what kind of liabilities they basically have and what kind of expenditures they incur what kind of revenues they get there are a lot of things basically that you look at but you know like looking at these things is not easy you need some experts to have a good eye on that like you know everybody is not trained or not able to look or get the right information from these books uh, and you know like we have got instances not in the developing countries but also in the developed countries that there have been so many companies that have deceived that have like you know forged and that have a uh, misguided people about their information like say for example they have uh, told something different and they were something different like you know and that basically is a very difficult to catch and you as an individual are not able to do that like you know you have to take help from uh, financial consultants you have to take help from financial experts and these financial experts charge money and you know like when you want to make some small investments you cannot afford to pay the bear that big fees to these all people so like you know you resort to the indirect finance you just go to the bank banks hire them you go to the mutual funds the mutual funds hire them and that's what basically happens and they basically you know like get the uh, get somehow the like you know hold of it so uh, you know like uh, the transaction costs financial intermediaries make profits by reducing transaction cost you know like if you are uh, depositing your money with the bank uh, you are not the only person who is depositing money with the bank there will be hundreds and thousands of people who will be depositing their money with the bank so the banks will not be processing a small amount so they will be requiring experts that can be like you know hired and that can be paid on a regular basis and they can get a lot of work from them so they basically are able to reduce cost with a small salary they are able to evaluate they are actually able to get evaluation about different kinds of investments so they basically get good idea about it so it's a very easy for the financial intermediaries like banks mutual funds and other kind of institutions to reduce their transaction costs by having experts on board and by having a trained people or trained staff so they reduce also transaction cost by developing expertise like say for example if you want to fix your own tap aapka nal ka agar kharab ho jaye and you know how to fix it and still like you know you will take hours to fix this you will take sometimes days to fix it but if you somehow call a plumber how long the plumber will take like say for example if the plumber takes 10 minutes you are going to take 100 minutes so that is what something that basically why a plumber is taking 10 minutes to do or fix your problem uh, because he is trained he is expert he does that every day he is not something he is not someone who is doing this first time or he basically is doing this every day so since he is doing it every day he is able to do it quick he is able to do it fast and he is able to create Uh, like you know or reduce the time cost and every cost that basically is involved okay so a financial intermediary is lower transaction cost mean that it can provide its customers with liquidity services uh, liquidity services means when you make investments with the uh, companies uh, directly uh, you lose liquidity you are not able to get your money back before a certain date but when you just do this through the financial intermediaries they also give you the chance to withdraw your money anytime you want like you know that actually having this very helpful because uh, you also want to uh, earn profit but along with the profit you also want to use money for your day to day transactions for that you need cash and that cash is available if you are basically having a situation where you are basically you know like your uh, your uh, money is with the uh, financial institution which allow you to withdraw uh, money whenever you want so banks provide depositors with checking accounts and enable them to pay their bills easily 
So depositors can earn interest on checking and saving accounts and yet convert them into goods and services whenever necessary. So uh, you can get the money back as well. So these uh, financial intermediaries also share your risk. Uh, they do not only reduce your transaction cost, but they also help you diversify your risk. So financial institutions create and sell assets with lesser risk to one party in order to buy assets with greater risk from the other party. So they basically, you know, like do this asset transformation thing and they try to get you the, uh, the safest kind of investments. Uh, they reduce their costs and uh, uh, kind of, you know, like the risks through diversification. Uh, diversification means like, you know, they basically diversify their work, they diversify uh, their assets. They don't invest everything at one place since they have got bigger portfolios so they can make investments at different places. So on average, they get the they get a very good return. Like say, for example, the average return means like say, for example, if you are losing on one asset and gaining on another asset, like on average, perhaps you are making good money. But if you are an individual investor and you are making investments and you are actually investing in only one particular asset, so you will now not be able to actually diversify it as good as some financial intermediaries can do. Another very important reasons for existence of the financial intermediaries and indirect finance is asymmetric information. Do you know about asymmetric information? Does anybody know about something about asymmetric information? Asymmetric concept is the main concepts in like, you know, in the reasons for existence of indirect finance. Uh, because, you know, like when you have a kind of, you know, like, uh, 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 market where you don't have got same information in the market existing dekhiye aap ek company ko apne company mein invest kar rahe hain agar wo company jo hai wo uski paas jo uski jo financial conditions hain wo kharab hain agar wo company financially achhi nahi hai to aapko ye baat pata hai ki aapke paas ye information aapke paas maujood nahi hai agar ye aapke paas information maujood nahi hai लेकिन ये इन्फॉर्मेशन जाहिर है उस कंपनी को पता है कि उनकी फाइनेंशियल कंडीशंस अच्छी नहीं है तो ऐसी सूरत में यू आर एक्चुअली हैविंग अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एसिमेट्रिक इंफॉर्मेशन लाइक यू नो योर इंफॉर्मेशन एज अ बायर इज नॉट इक्वल टू द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द सेलर सो सेलर हैज गॉट मोर इंफॉर्मेशन देन यू डू समटाइम्स इस वन पर्टिकुलर पार्टी एक्चुअली हैज गॉट मोर इंफॉर्मेशन देन द अदर पार्टी एंड दैट पार्टी व्हिच एक्चुअली हैज गॉट मोर इंफॉर्मेशन गेट्स द एडवांटेज ऑफ इट एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एसिमेट्रिक इंफॉर्मेशन you know this asymmetric information is really really important and that basically can be very damaging for your financial investments because if you are lending to someone like say for example an organization wants to hire a person and they are trying to judge whether the person is good or not they can do it like you know very very limitedly like you know they can actually like you know just know about the behavior of that person during the interviews but somehow they are not able to know about his life uh, how what kind of a person he is what kind of uh, work he does and how uh, act like how committed he is in his working or she is in working so they are basically all the asymmetric information and similarly when you make investments that is a very big problem that you don't have got information that other parties do so it is something very important that you just go to the indirect finance and you go to the financial intermediaries because they try to deal with this particular kind of a problem so when you think about asymmetric information uh, there are two types of asymmetric information adverse selection and moral hazard have you heard about adverse selection and moral hazard jo bimar honge ji jo bimar honge and that bimar people can basically become a burden on insurance company in the longer run if you are choosing a very bimar person or very like you know a person who has got a lot of diseases or he has got chronic diseases so your company insurance company will get immediately into the business and you will be paying their bills and you will be paying a lot of money for them but if you choose somehow a healthy person who does not have got a lot of problems or who does not have got known uh, reasons for to be hospital hospitalized or basically those who basically were healthy so your company can save money on them like say for example if you are selling insurance to someone who is healthy uh, and he is not going to go to the hospital so you are not going to go into the business immediately you are not going to go spend go to spend money on him or her immediately like you know because uh, you are not basically they are not ill so this is something can happen with a financial uh, transactions as well that you choose a wrong particular party for investments 
another problem that can exist is the moral hazard. Uh, this only happens when transaction has occurred or transaction has been completed. Uh, the hazard that borrower has incentive to engage in, in undesirable immoral activities, making it more likely that won't pay the loan back. You know that when IMF loan gives you, have you heard about IMF conditionalities? Yes, sir. So when IMF loan gives you, what do you think? Why does it put conditionalities? Because, sir, you know that you won't pay back. So, he puts conditions on your story. आपने जिसको पैसा दिया है मिसाल के तौर पर आप एक बैंक है और आप एक शख्स को बिजनेस के लिए पैसा दे रहे हैं आप ये चाहेंगे की वो बिजनेस में पैसा लगाए आप ये चाहेंगे कि उसका बिजनेस तबाह ना हो क्योंकि अगर उसका बिजनेस तबाह होगा तो क्या होगा तो आपके पैसे भी डूब जाएंगे आपके पैसे भी डूब जाएंगे वेरी गुड तो आप इस बात को इंश्योर करेंगे कि वो ऐसा बिजनेस ना करे जिससे उसको नुकसान हो वो ऐसी जगह पैसा ना लगाए जिससे उसको फायदा ना हो रहा हो वो ऐसी जगह पैसा ना लगाए जहाँ पे उसका जहाँ तो उसकी रिकवरी जो है वो पॉसिबल ना हो तो आप चूंकि ये आप उसके लिए नहीं कर रहे होते आप अपने लिए कर रहे होते This is not something you do for that person. Rather, you do it for yourself. That's what basically is very important. That you basically, you know, like you try to always save your money. You always try to make your money saved, and that basically happens because, and that is what something, and that is called the moral hazard problem. If a person takes a loan, this is like a farmer. He takes a loan. You see, in the common way, the agricultural loans are very expensive loans. In which you get loans at subsidized rates. Pe loans अगर एक एग्रीकल्चरिस्ट है जो कि लोन लेता है सब्सिडाइज रेट पे और उसको फसल के लिए इस्तेमाल नहीं करता ही यूजेस फॉर हिज ओन कंजम्पशन और खाने पीने में वो इस्तेमाल कर देता है तो क्या होगा ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू पे द मनी बैक एंड द बैंक विल हैव गॉट बैड डेट्स सो दिस इज वॉट समथिंग हैपन सो मॉरल हैजर्ड जिस तरह आप इंश्योरेंस कंपनी से आप जब आप गाड़ी इंश्योर कराते हैं अब जब आपकी गाड़ी इंश्योर्ड होती है एक शख्स जिसकी गाड़ी इंश्योर्ड है और एक शख्स जिसकी गाड़ी इंश्योर्ड नहीं है आपका क्या ख्याल है उनके बिहेवियर में कितना फर्क होगा गाड़ी की लुक आफ्टर करने में गाड़ी की केयर करने में और गाड़ी को साफ गाड़ी को जो है वो लॉक करने में या गाड़ी को जो है वो और चीजों को इस तरह मतलब किसी और खतरा के इस्तेमाल के हिसाब से वट डू यू थिंक हाउ मच इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ पर्सन हु इज हैविंग अ कार विद इंश्योरेंस एंड अ पर्सन हु इज हैविंग अ कार विदाउट इंश्योरेंस आपका क्या ख्याल है कौन ज्यादा केयरफुल होगा इंश्योरेंसिबिलिटीजिबल so financial intermediaries help reducing these all kind of problems uh, they actually help you in reducing adverse selection problem and moral hazard problem and that what actually help this is how you can make your profits and the profits are generally very you know like uh, easy to make because when you have got this kind of a, like you know institutions which are taking care of your problems and they are not basically letting Uh, any other uh, firm or any other particular business basically you know like do uh, like you know to take the advantage of it so that basically is something is um, is a, is a good uh, kind of a way aapko pata hai ki hamare paas jo financial intermediaries ke types hain unme sabse zyada jo badi type hai wo depository institutions ki hai uh, depository institutions are those institutions aapko pata hai ki jo bhi ye jo financial ke sector ke idare hain Uh, they actually take money to invest into different projects samajhte hain na aap log ek jo idara hai like say for example ek company hai ek bank hai jo paisa leta hai logon se aage paise udhar dene ke liye ek mutual fund hai wo logon se paisa leta hai aage paisa invest karne ke liye ye jo mukhtalif idare hain ye paisa jo raise karte hain ye mukhtalif tarikon se karte hain jaise some of the organizations accept deposits 
like say for example when you go to the bank you make a deposit you open an account with the bank you deposit your money and that collective money of all the depositors is used to make loans to other people aisa hi hota hai aapka kya khayal hai mutual funds ye ek company jo hoti hai jo stock jo public limited company hai wo kaise paisa jama karti hai what do you think इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए आपको पता है आप लोगों को जिस तरह से एक कंपनी नेशनल नेशनल सेविंग सेविंग स्कीम स्कीम भी आता है सर इसमें नहीं तो एक गवर्नमेंट की है जिसमें आप पैसे जमा कराते हैं वो भी करवाते हैं आप पैसा अपना तो लेकिन ये जो आपके म्यूचुअल फंड हैं ये इशू करते हैं जिस तरह एक कंपनी अपने शेयर इशू करती है बिल्कुल इसी तरीके से म्यूचुअल फंड इशू करते हैं अपने यूनिट वेन द पीपल बाई यूनिट दे टेक यूनिट एंड देव मनी टू द म्यूचुअल फंड and so many people when they actually collect this when they collect the money from so many people that money becomes big and they make investments of it how insurance company raise funds aapka kya khayal hai insurance companies kaise funds ko raise karti hain kyunki aapko pata hai insurance companies bhi market mein bahut bada investor hote hain they make a lot of investments to earn profits on their uh, money and what do you think how do they raise their money kis tarike se paisa jama karte hain सर वो जो इनकम सर वो जैसे एक इंश्योरेंस होती है हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस जैसे अगर वो करवाता है अपने तो वो सर वो अपनी इनकम में से कुछ अमाउंट दे रहा होता है जी जी प्रीमियम देता है प्रीमियम जी प्रीमियम के तौर पे जी 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 बिल्कुल तो ये जो इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज हैं ये पैसा जमा करती हैं प्रीमियम के थ्रू दे चार्ज प्रीमियम the policy sell karte hain of course sahar ali is saying they sell the policy and they basically of course they sell the policy and they receive premium ye jo premium hota hai misal pe aap har mahine jama kara rahe hain paise main har mahine jama kara raha hu ek aur log jama kara rahe hain 100 log 200 log 500 log 1000 log 10000 log jama kara rahe hain to jo paisa har mahine jama ho raha hai wo that is creating a pool of fund and that fund is invested at different places they get the benefit of it and they just pay to the to their people who have bought that so depository institutions kaun se hote hain uh like you know uh, they are different from insurance companies they are different from like you know stock market stock i'm sorry public limited companies they are different from mutual funds uh, they raise money by uh, by accepting deposits they raise money by accepting what deposits so the commercial banks raise funds primarily by issuing checkable savings and time deposits which are used to make commercial consumer and mortgage loans collectively these banks comprise the largest financial intermediary to have the most diversified asset portfolios uh iske alawa you have got mutual funds you have got finance companies that we are going to uh, talk about of course uh, down the road and you have got money market mutual funds or the money market itself you have got investment banks investment bank ko jante hain aap log which bank is called the investment bank yes sir sir the banks which is issues insurance for the companies for the first time mm -hmm. right okay so how are they different from commercial banks commercial banks are um, profit seeking or um, banks which in which we deposit our money and they um, um, allow the um, the funds to loan the people and they receive the interest okay. and the investment uh, uh, the, um, the investment banks hire 
such kind of people sir you told us about in this last lecture sir which are very highly paid which has a great vision towards the economy very good yes uh, the company to publicize the company's sh shares uh, to the people very good very good you know the investment bankers are really of course they are very highly paid people and what they do basically they advise uh, companies on investments basically like you know they also underwrite the securities uh, they offer mergers and acquisitions assistance like say for example if a company wants to merge with another company or they want to acquire one company is going to actually absorb into another country uh, they can basically help in that and they act as dealers in security markets they basically help you launch your shares first time so there are different kinds of financial intermediaries available in the market uh, who basically are working on different kinds of aspects so if you talk about the regulations of banking and financial uh, markets they are very important because you know like what are the main reasons for regulation aapko dekhe sabse bada important problem kya hota hai agar aap kisi company mein invest karne ke liye jaye to aapko chahiye hoti information information about their assets information about their liabilities information about their expenses information about their revenues information about anything that basically is happening in that organization because if you want to make investments you want to make investments with clear mind you want to make an informed decision and that informed decision will depend on that how much information this company is providing you now if you are basically you know like if you are uh, making investments in some company and that company is not giving you information what you can do about it वो अपनी इन्फॉर्मेशन को हाइड कर जाती है नहीं बताती इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको सही तो आप क्या कर सकते हैं एज एन इंडिविजुअल आप क्या कर सकते हैं सर हम इन्वेस्ट नहीं करेंगे ये तो एक जाहिर ऑप्शन है आपके पास और व्हाट एल्स यू कैन डू अगर आप एक कंपनी में इन्वेस्ट करना चाहते हैं आप उसे इन्फॉर्मेशन मांगते हैं वो इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको नहीं देती तो आप क्या करेंगे देखिए अगर आप किसी कंपनी में इन्वेस्ट करना चाहते हैं और वो इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं देती या गलत इन्फॉर्मेशन देती है या अपनी इन्फॉर्मेशन को छुपा के देती है तो आप कुछ नहीं कर सकते एज एन इंडिविजुअल लेकिन गवर्नमेंट कैन डू दैट गवर्नमेंट हैज गॉट अ प्रॉपर फाइनेंशियल वॉच टॉक्स लाइक सिर्फ फॉर एग्जांपल आपको पता है पाकिस्तान में जो ये वॉच डॉग है जो कि फाइनेंशियल जो कंपनीज को रेगुलेट uh, करता है वो कौन सा कौन सा वॉच डॉग है कौन सी uh, कौन सी बॉडी है जो कि कंपनीज को रेगुलेट करती है मतलब उनके ऑपरेशंस को कंट्रोल करती है और उनको इस बात पे फोर्स करती है कि वो अपनी इन्फॉर्मेशन सही तौर पर रिवील करें और वक्त पे रिवील करें और लोगों को बताए कि असल में उनकी क्या फाइनेंशियल कंडीशन है वो कौन सी बॉडी है यहाँ पे जो पाकिस्तान में जो ये काम कर रही है एफ नहीं एफ पी आर का काम रेवेन्यू कलेक्शन कर रहा होता है नैप का काम पॉलिटिकल नैप का है बेसिकली नेशनल अकाउंटेबिलिटी ब्यूरो नहीं नहीं एस सी सी सिक्योरिटीज एंड एक्सचेंज कमीशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान तो सिक्योरिटीज एंड एक्सचेंज कमीशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान का नाम अगर आपने पहले नहीं सुना तो प्लीज को नोट करें और इसकी वेबसाइट पे जाए आज की तारीख में और आज की तारीख में जाके इसको देखें कि ये बेसिकली एस सी सी पी क्या है क्या काम करती है और किस तरीके से अपना रोल प्ले कर रही है क्या क्या इसकी प्रोडक्ट्स हैं और क्या क्या चीजें ये इस्तेमाल इसको जो है वो ऑफर करती है लोगों के लिए तो एस ई सी पी इज देयर टू मेक थिंग्स लाइक नो टू बिहेव टू मेक दीज कंपनीज बिहेव बिकॉज द कंपनीज दे बेसिकली हैव गॉट वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग मैंडेट फॉर फोर्सिंग द कंपनीज टू रिवील राइट इंफॉर्मेशन एट राइट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम another reason for financial regulation is the soundness of financial intermediaries dekhiye ek zamane mein abhi kuch arse pehle wo waqt aapko khair yaad nahi hoga isliye kyunki aap utne bade nahi honge aur dusre ye hai ki isliye ki aap jo hai wo aapko pata nahi is baat pe interest hoga ki nahi hoga ke bahut sare banks khulna shuru ho gaye the ek zamane mein banks is tarah se khul rahe the jis tarike se ki supermarket khulti hai ya koi ek पेट्रोल पंप खुलता है या कोई और स्टेशन खुल जाती हैं चीजों के या कोई एक ब्रांड की शॉप खुलती है देर वर सो मेनी पीपल हु एक्चुअली वर एक्चुअली मेकिंग बैंक्स 
लेकिन क्या बुराई है इसके साथ अगर आपको मैं ये पूछूं सवाल कि अगर बहुत सारे लोग बैंक्स बना रहे हों या फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन पॉप अप हो रहे हों रोजाना या हर कुछ अरसे के बाद तो इसका क्या नुकसान हो सकता है सर इकोनॉमी में फंड बहुत ज्यादा राइज हो जाएगा यानी फाइनेंशियल कंडीशन जो है उसको स्टेबल करना में प्रॉब्लम होगी क्योंकि हर बैंक जो है वो डिपॉजिट लेगा और लोन्स देगा तो इस वजह से इकोनॉमी में जो है वो पैसे की मकदार एक तरह से ज्यादा हो जाएगी यानी इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन को स्टेबल करना मुश्किल हो जाएगा और कोई मनी सर्कुलेशन कम हो जाएगी दिस इज व्हाट सहार अली वाज सेइंग देखिए अगर बहुत सारे बैंक्स खुल जाएंगे तो वो फाइनेंशियली इतने स्ट्रांग नहीं होंगे कि किसी भी किस्म का स्ट्रेस बर्दाश्त कर सके जरा सी अगर कोई फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम आएगी और इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम आएगी तो वो बैंक्स उनको बंद करना पड़ जाएंगे और जब कोई बैंक बंद करता है तो उसकी सूरत में क्या होता है कि उसको उसके नुकसान होता है ना सिर्फ उसको नुकसान होता है बल्कि उसके जितने लोगों ने पैसे जमा कराए होते हैं सबको नुकसान होता है और वो पूरा बैंक जो है वो लॉस में चला जाता है तो ये बेसिकली जाहिर है बहुत सारे लोगों को नुकसान होता है अगर बैंक बंद हो जाए या बैंक भाग जाए या बैंक जो है वो परफॉर्म ना कर रहा हो तो देर आर सो मैनी प्रॉब्लम दैट कैन अ कंपनी और देर अ कंट्री कैन फेस तो देर इज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट दैट दे शुड बी एंश्योरिंग दैट ऑल द फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरीज दैट आर एग्जिस्टिंग हैव गॉट साउंड फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन दैट इफ सम प्रॉब्लम कम्स they have got the ability to deal with their problems by themselves and they don't close down immediately whenever the problem comes so ye information aapke paas maujood hai so you can look at this so iske alawa these are the information like you know that the company is basically the the issues on that so aapko pata hai ki har kisi ko tamam aap aap log jab माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स पढ़ते हैं तो माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स में परफेक्ट कंपटीशन में आप पढ़ते हैं या मुख्तलि किस्म के आप स्ट्रक्चर्स में पढ़ते हैं कि एंट्री एंड एग्जिट तो ये बड़ा मुश्किल करते हैं कि आपके पास जो एंट्री है वो जाहिर हर कोई एंट्री ना करे ओनली दे आर लाइक यू नो द ओनली साउंड फाइनेंशियल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड साउंड पीपल कैन बी यू नो लाइक कैन स्टार्ट द फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरीज और ये डिस्कलोजर रिक्वायरमेंट है एवरी फर्म इज रिक्वायर्ड टू डिस्कलोज ऑल इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट देयर ऑपरेशन about their assets about their liabilities about their incomes about their expenditures so that people could take the right decisions so uh, this is a self read dekhen ek aur cheez badi important hai ke deposit insurance uh, aap jo paise bank mein jama karwate hain agar bank mein khuda na khasta aag lag jaye ya chori ho jaye to kya hoga aapke paas अगर जिस बैंक में पैसे आपने जमा कराए हैं उस बैंक में डाका पड़ जाता है या उस बैंक के पैसे इसमें आग लग जाती है या उस बैंक के पैसे चोरी जाते हैं तो क्या होगा आपके साथ सर अगर वो बैंक मतलब इंश्योर्ड है तो फिर हमें तो कोई उसका नुकसान नहीं होगा देखें हर बैंक को इंश्योर्ड होना पड़ता है ये बात आपकी सर सर बोलिए सर सर हमने इसमें पढ़ा था कि बैंक के पास जितने भी डिपॉजिट होते हैं उसका कुछ पर्सन जो है वो स्टेट बैंक अपने पास रखता है और अग, और अगर ऐसी कोई सिचुएशन होती है तो स्टेट बैंक जो है वो बैंक करप्ट होने से बैंक को बचाता है वो तो देखिए तो, लेंडर ऑफ लास्ट रिसोर्ट का काम करता है देखिए लेंडर ऑफ लास्ट रिसोर्ट का मतलब ये होता है की बैंकों के पास आमतौर पर कैश नहीं होता या बैंकों को पैसों की जरूरत होती है तो उस वक्त सेंट्रल बैंक उनको लैंडिंग करता है और ये लैंडिंग करने की वजह ये होती है कि वो उसके पास उसके पैसे रखे होते हैं जो उसके पास उसके जो एक कैपिटल जो उसका जो है वो कैश रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट्स होते हैं लेकिन इंश्योरेंस एक अलग चीज है इंश्योरेंस में ये होता है कि वो इंश्योर्ड कराते हैं इसको कि जो पैसा है अगर उनका जो है वो चोरी हो जाएगा खराब हो जाएगा जिस तरह वो आपने एक पाकिस्तानी पाकिस्तानी मूवी देखी है नामालूम अफराज सर देखी है तो नामालूम अफराद का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो यही है कि जो वो लॉकर्स में पैसे रखवाते हैं जो लॉकर्स में चीजें रखवाते हैं वो सिक्योर्ड है इंश्योर्ड है तो अगर बैंक को आग लग जाए तो क्या होगा सर उनका पैसा रिफंड हो जाता है जी बिल्कुल उनका पैसा भी रिफंड होगा अगर मिसाल के तौर पर आपने एक लॉकर लिया हुआ है जिसमें आप पांच लाख रूपए की चीज रख सकते हैं 
तो अगर लॉकर आग लग जाए लॉकर बंद हो जाए तो पांच लाख रुपए की इंश्योरेंस आपको मिल जाएगी तो उन्होंने ये कहा था कि भाई हम लॉकर में कोई बेकार चीजें रख देते हैं ताकि जो है वो उनको पांच लाख मिल जाए तो दैट इज वॉट समथिंग इज एन आइडिया के जो है बेसिकली दीपल प्ले विद इट तो ये आप यू पुट ऑल्सो रेस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन देयर बिहेवियर्स एंड यू ऑल्सो लाइक यू नो ये जो अभी बात कर रही थी कि आपके बिहेवियर को कंट्रोल किया जाता है रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट्स के जरिए जितने पैसे बैंकों के पास आते हैं दे आर नॉट अलाउड टू लैंड ऑल द मनी दे हैव टू कीप सम रिजर्व विद द सेंट्रल बैंक एंड दैट मनी इज बेसिकली यूज फॉर लैंडिंग दैम फर्दर इफ दे रिक्वायर एनी काइंड ऑफ हेल्प फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल बैंक ओके सो दिस इज it for this chapter so 